Hello students, welcome. Previously, lesson 13, form 2, topic 2, we were dealing with the physical properties of the halogens. So today, lesson 14, we want to proceed to the chemical properties of the halogens. And we are going to start with ion formation. We want to see how halogens form ion. So we are saying halogen atoms have 7 electrons in their atoms and the level they gain one electron to be stable, thus forming single negatively charged ions. For example, colorate ion is written like this. So remember, chlorine atom is having an atomic number of 17 with an electronic configuration of 287. So for chlorine to form ion, it can gain one electron or lose seven electrons. And we say it. Less energy is required for chlorine atom to gain one electron rather than losing seven electrons. So for that, chlorine ion will be having 18 electrons and also 17 protons. So for us to need to, to know the need to judge, we are supposed to take protons which are positively judged, which are 17, then we add electrons which are negatively judged, which are 18 in our case. So there, we are going to get negative 1 as our overall charge. That's why colloid ion is written like that. So we're saying these ions are called the halide ions. They form ionic compounds with metals, for example, sodium chloride. So we're having sodium ion and also colloid ion, which are bonded. And covalent bonds with nonmetals and with themselves, for example, chlorine bonding to another chlorine so next let us see what is electron affinity remember when we're dealing with the alkali metals and alpha and earth metals we're having something called ionization energy and you see ionization energy is the minimum amount of energy required to remove one electron from the outermost energy level of an atom in the gaseous state so what is the definition for electron affinity and you say electron affinity is the energy required for the process of gaining electron or electrons or we can define electron affinity as the minimum amount of energy required to accept or to gain an, an electron into the outermost energy level of an atom in the gaseous state you can also define it like that so next we are saying the electron affinity of halogens decreases down the group the reason this is due to the increase in the size of the atom as one move down the group okay next to say halogens become less reactive as you move or as one go down the group therefore fluorine which is at the top of the group is the most reactive halogen while iodine which is the bottom of the of the group becomes the least reactive halogen so next we are going to see the second chemical properties of halogens that's reaction of halogens with metals and we're saying halogens react with metals forming their respective metal halides. However, the rate of the reactions decreases down the group. For metals with varied, varied oxidation number or variable oxidation states, different halogens form different compounds depending on their oxidizing strength. Remember, we said fluorine is having the strongest oxidizing strength because it's the most reactive halogen followed by chlorine then we're having bromine and the list is iodine with the lowest oxidizing strength so i say dry chlorine reacts with most vigorously with the hot iron forming dark brown crystals of iron 3 chloride as shown below so we move and we are going to see the diagram for the reaction between iron and also chlorine gas so here we have a dry chlorine gas it's passed through a combustion tube which we are going to have iron wood being heated and we are going to collect our iron 3 chloride crystals in the flask here this here then we are having a guide tube here this guide tube contains calcium oxide and we're having to fume carbon so we go and we're saying Dry chlorine is used since iron 3 chloride is highly delucent. So what's delucent? We said delucent substances are substances that absorb moisture from the atmosphere and form solution. And 
it will dissolve in the wet gas. So we are supposed to use dry chlorine gas when we are doing this reaction. Next, we are saying dry chlorine is passed through combustion tube before heating. Before heating the iron, first of all, dry chlorine is passed through the combustion tube. What is the reason? In order to expel all the air in the setup, preventing oxidation of iron. If we see, we have the combustion tube here. So we have to first of all pass dry chlorine gas in the combustion tube so that it removes or it expels the air which was originally in the in the combustion tube. So what is the advantage of removing it? Because we are preventing iron to react with oxygen which was initially in the combustion tube after being heated to form iron 2 oxide. So next we are saying iron 3 chloride readily sublimes and it is hence not possible to collect it in the combustion tube but it is collected as a sublimate in the flask shown above. If we check we are having iron 3 chloride which is collected as a sublimate in this flask not in the combustion tube. So next we are saying calcium oxide is used in the guide tube reason to dry any incoming air as iron 3 chloride is highly liquid. So here is where we have the guide tube and we are placing there calcium oxide. But we can also place there anhydrous calcium chloride because both of them are acting as a dry agent. Therefore, they are going to remove any moisture from the incoming air. So you're saying calcium oxide is used in the guide tube to dry any incoming air as iron 3 chloride is highly liquid. So you're saying next, hot iron glows in bromine vapor to form dark red crystals of iron 3 bromide. And that is the setup that we have there. Then we move, we are saying iodine vapor uh, reacts slowly with the hot iron to form grayish black crystals of iron 2 iodide. Remember, when we are dealing with chlorine, we have gotten iron 3 chloride. When we are dealing with bromine, we have gotten iron 3 bromide. But when we are dealing with iodine, we are going to form iron 2 iodide. Why not iron 3 iodide? So we are saying iron 3 iodide is not formed since is not formed since iodine is not reactive enough to form a salt with iron in the highest oxidation state or in the highest oxidation number. So this is the setup to see when iodine vapor reacts with the hot iron metal. Lastly, we want to go to the third chemical bromides of the halogens and that's the reaction of halogens with water. We're saying chlorine dissolves in water to form chlorine water which is a mixture of hydrochloric acid and chloric acid. So when water dissolves in chlorine or when chlorine dissolves in water, we form a compound called chlorine water. So chlorine water is a combination of hydrochloric acid and also chloric acid. Chloric acid is also known as hypochlorous acid. So we're having chlorine plus water, we are going to get hydrochloric acid and also chloric acid. So to write the chemical equation, Chlorine gas reacting with water, we are going to get hydrochloric acid and also chloric acid. So how do you write chloric acid? You only write hydrochloric acid, then you put oxygen in front. Or you can do HOCl. That's how else we can write chloric acid. So we're saying when the chlorine water is tested with litmus paper, the blue one turns red, showing that the solution is acidic. That means chlorine water is acidic. Then the litmus papers are bleached, that means they are decolorized immediately. And we say the bleaching action is a property of chloric acid. That means chloric acid is the one that's responsible for the bleaching property of chlorine water. We are saying chloric acid is unstable and decomposes to form hydrochloric acid and an atom of oxygen. We are saying the atom of oxygen then combines with the natural dye in the litmus paper to form a colorless compound, which is dye plus oxygen, which is dye plus oxygen. This is the colorless compound. Okay, we see that the question, we're having dye 
is colored at the start it reacts it combines with the choleric one acid which has the plinching property it's written like that of course then we are going to have choleric one acid being decomposed to form hydrochloric acid and also an atom of oxygen so that atom of oxygen combines with the natural dye so we are going to have dye plus oxygen which will be a colorless compound so this is how the plinching action of uh, chlorine water came into so we are going to move we are saying chlorine does not bleach dry lit mass paper because chloric one acid cannot be formed in the absence of water first of all chlorine must dissolve in water so that we form chlorine water which is the combination of hydrochloric acid and chloric one acid so if there's no water that means there's no chlorine water if there's no chlorine water there's no chloric one acid if there's no chloric one acid there's no bleaching action so i say the bleaching action is only possible in the presence of water so you're saying what is the color of chlorine water so chlorine water is yellow in color and that's not the presence of chloric one acid so the color of chlorine which is yellow it's chloric one acid which gives that that color to chlorine water and we're saying in sunlight the yellow color of chlorine water is decolorized this is due to the decomposition of chloric one acid into oxygen gas and hydrochloric acid which are colorless by the sunlight this, we have the question there two moles of chloric one acid decomposes due to the sunlight or uv light and we are going to get the uv light we are going to get two moles of hydrochloric acid and also one mole of oxygen gas this reaction does not take place in the dark so we are going to see that setup the effect of sunlight on chlorine water at the beginning we were having chlorine water which was having yellow color we have the sunlight here that means chlorine chloric one acid which was in chlorine water decomposes to form hydrochloric acid and oxygen gas so that the colorless gas oxygen gas uses of the halogens and their compounds number one we're saying fluorine is a raw material in the preparation of synthetic vapor known as bulletetrafluoroethene number two some compounds of fluorine are added to water and some toothpaste in small quantities to reduce tooth decay number three fluorine is used in the manufacture of hydrogen fluoride chlorine is used to make bleaches used in paper bulb and textile industries Number five, chlorine is added to water to kill microorganisms in water treatment works. And number six, we are saying chlorine is used in the manufacture of plastic known as BVC, bolivinyl chloride. Number seven, we are saying chlorine is used in large scale manufacture of hydrochloric acid. We are saying bromine is used in the manufacture of silver bromide, which is used to, to make the light sensitive photographic paper and films. Then lastly, number nine, a solution of iodine in alcohol is used as a disinfectant. So, Lanas, that's the end of our video today. Thank you.